you know, and there's a, there's always a debate about being a plotter in writing and, uh, versus a gardener. I think it's George R. R. Martin that calls them that the people who kind of fly by the seat of their pants when writing versus the people that plot out their novel heavily before, um, beginning to write the prose. I am the latter. I plot out the novel fairly heavily and um, just to let you guys kind of see a little window into the process that I use. I can't say it's the best process ever, but it really works for me. And the first thing I will tell you to do is use a program. I wrote my first two novels, which will probably never see the light of day because I was really just learning what was going on at that point in time. Um, I wrote them with Microsoft Word, which is fine. There are tons of giant authors that do that. But man, using an, a program like Scrivener is so much better better. It just makes everything a lot easier, especially if you're an organizer. If you're an organizer who likes to keep a lot of extra information, not just the pros, it's it's just invaluable. So I know that sounds like an ad for Scrivener. Hey, Scrivener, if you want to sponsor this, this podcast, this YouTube channel, hit me up. But uh, I, I really enjoy using Scrivener. I've thought, thought about even making a video for you guys in the future about kind of how I lay things out when it comes to working on a novel in terms of like organization and things like that. I don't know. It seems like something that would be interesting, but yeah, I've been working on the plotting. I haven't begun prose writing for this novel, but I've been working on the plotting tirelessly and it is moving along at a breakneck pace. And I'm really happy with where it's going. I, uh, what I do is, I begin with something I call the brain fart, which is where I, I open up a document and I pretty much just puke up words of ideas and things about what I want the story to go. I start with some ideas about like I already know in my head, just some major plot points I want to hit kind of where the novel is going to go. And then I start at what would be chapter one. And I just say the novel will begin with blah, 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 blah. And then I just try and tell the story off the top of my head, obviously thinking deeply about it, I don't just spit out anything that comes to mind, but I, I just kind of think about a linear cycle of events for the novel and I just walk them through. I, I walk through th those events in about, I don't know, maybe like a thousand words in a document and I just kind of spit it all out and get to the end. And that's not exactly how the novel comes out in terms of the way it's plotted, but it really gets me a strong kind of very flim a strong flimsy a strong kind of also very flimsy framework for the the plotting to begin and then where it really gets interesting and what i think is most useful is i make a storyboard type of uh document in which i basically make sub documents. I make a folder that has sub documents of each act of the story. So for act one, I will just start with numbered beats and it will go through from pay what would be chapter one to like chapter 15, how, whatever the parts where it's going to divide up. And I'll just go in depth in detail and write scenes, write out, you know, loose scenes. I don't write dialogue. I don't write anything, anything. These are documents that are like a thousand, two thousand words, but just kind of laying out exactly where I think the story is going to go. And I get a good, a good pass of that across all the acts. I have act one, act two, and act three, and they all have these numbered beats that tell what I'm planning to write. And that's really how I plot it out. And I try to make it look like a true storyboard, kind of like they would in the movies where I'm just telling what's going to happen in each scene, because it really helps me to write later when it comes to writing prose. I can change things up in the prose if, if, if I lean a different way or have a new idea, but it really helps me to have a scaffolding that allows me to focus on making the prose the best that it can be so that I don't have to come back later and throw away some great pages because the plotting and the, the actual, the logistics of whether or not that scene needed to exist. I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, just, that's just a little bit of a window into my writing process. I get all that written out and then I have separate little documents for all the characters, all the places, all the things, things I need to know, uh, just kind of lists of things so that I can reference them. And it has like characters and what color their eyes are, what's their backstory, um, obviously their names. Everything's just sort of organized that way so that when it's time to start writing prose, 
I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm ready and I have everything that I need so that my brain can focus on the words alone. And I think that's really, really helpful for me. And like I said, if you're a pantser, then you're someone who, you know, likes to fly by the seat of your pants, then you can completely disregard this. This might not be for you, but I think these are some good ideas and it's a really good way to get started if you're not really sure how to begin plotting. And, you know, I say this because some people plot just super extensively in such detail. And I'll say, I don't do that. I get kind of detailed, but I leave a lot of room to move. And I think it's a good kind of medium between allowing myself some room to get creative and to change things up on the fly and really, um, really, leave the room for that spark when I'm writing so that I can stay motivated and into it while also not having to divert my emotional energy and my creative energy to trying to write beautiful and um, professional level prose while also just wondering like what's even going to happen next. It's just, it's very helpful when you're writing prose to try and get it right or as close to right as you possibly can the first time. If you, if you have an idea, if you have a, a strong written out idea of what you're getting into, that's just my opinion on it. Um, after that, I also create, it's also helpful to, and you can go as in depth as you want on this and make even more documents like this, but I'll just make a little document called the philosophy of the story in which I, I'll just take the main characters and even some of the sub characters, you can go as in depth as you want on this. And I'll just write out what that character's philosophy for the book is going to be, what their main motivations are going to be, what their arc is going to be, what the point of their arc is going to be. So that I I really, it's harder to get off track because sometimes you can be writing and you can have characters go in directions that you didn't really mean to, or you can kind of lose the spirit of what you originally wanted the novel to be. And that might be okay. It might come out better that way in the end. You might want to change that. But it's nice to kind of have something to fall back on and be like, let me look back. Okay, would this character do this here? This is how I wanted them to be. This was the this is the end that I was heading for. And does what I'm writing now accommodate that? So yeah, just some, you know, I mean this this isn't a tutorial video, but just some ideas on how I think you can loosely plot and you can go as in detail as you want or keep it broad picture. Um, I think Scrivener is a great tool for doing that. And uh, yeah, 